We're good to go? Okay. Um, my name is Zach Pfeffer, and I'm the uh, Android platform lead. And at Roger's request, um, <laughs> uh, Roger requested that we have a few planning sessions for ARM and Lenaro, and this is the first of those planning sessions. We're going to have um, this planning session today, we're going to have an um, uh, Elba Mal Mali planning session tomorrow, and the second part of this discussion on Wednesday. Um, I have created an agenda based on Roger's input uh, that I've pasted up here on the uh, Etherpad. And so what we're going to do is essentially go through each one of these points, take some notes, have a discussion, and um, in this first session, what I'd like to do is I'll give an overview of what Lenaro's doing with Android, and then I'd like um, Arm to give an overview of kind of what they've been doing, and then after after those discussions, um, then we can um, you know we'll cover the, the key technical points um, about Lenaro Android and Arm um, as other as the external users will use it. And then, obviously, we're the, the end goal um, of, of this work, one of the end goals is to actually uh, plan for consolidation. So we'll talk about that and, and some of the steps we can go through to, to actually do, to actually consolidate. Uh, and we've got John Stoltz here, who's, whose tree is, is effectively that point of consolidation. So John can also give some good input about, about, uh, about that work. So, so would you like to very quickly introduce the big command over here? Yeah, that'd be that'd great. Be benefit? Yeah. Sure. Big benefit. Big benefit to anybody here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm Roger from the TSC. Um, from on, from on, we've got here Dan Handley. So he's in part of our platforms team. He knows everything there is about uh, um, secure boot and new EFI and those sorts of things. So he's here to find out pretty much himself what we're going to do in terms of Android. I've got uh, Dave here, Dave Butcher. So Dave is our tech lead on our Android project. So he's our Mr. Android. And if we want to ask you something right or wrong, it's Dave who gets the casting vote. Um, over here, we've got uh, um, Andy Picard. Yeah, you've got your name. So Andy, Andy's one of our managers, and he looks after all our platform stuff. So if any of you are working with Elba, and he's the chair for delivering it, the software, boots, and everything that comes from it, comes out of his team. Over here, we've got Vinod, and Vinod um, delivers everything to do with DS5. So he's all the tools, all the process tools, and everything, and he's really keen to find out how he can, how he can benefit from Android and what we can do in terms of synergy. Over on this side, we've got Fang, is it? Yeah, Fang. I'm from, from Shanghai. So he's from Shanghai. Talk slowly for the poor chap because he's not been long here and he's not quite used to our accent yet. So he's looking at home entertainment, Android's use on that, and there's a blueprint he'd like to work with you guys on. So he's here to see how he can build some links and make this happen. And we've got Ashok over here. AJ? AJ, sorry. Almost got a clean sweep of everybody's name. <laughs> I do apologize. So AJ, AJ's come all the way from Bangalore. So AJ is heading up all our benchmarking efforts, and he's doing a lot of benchmarking across Android. He's looking at how bits and crates are the hot spots. He'll be starting to work with Dave Butcher to see how we can do some improvements there. So he's keen to understand what you guys are doing and how we can come up and, and do, some, do some work together as well. So you've got a whole spectrum of people here on the software. Okay, thanks very much. Fantastic. That's a great idea. I'll go ahead and introduce the book. People that, that I know here <laughs> and what their roles are. Um, we've got Alexander, who is our platform lead and is my lead and responsible for uh, both the Android platform, the Ubuntu platform, the infrastructure group, and the uh, uh, Lava Lava test group. Um, we've got Franz here, who is um, on the Android team and is currently working with the. Um, working with the CI loop to get our CI loop uh, ready to go, um, has recently um, connected the Android, our Android build system, which does our Android builds, to our test system. So as that matures, uh, that um, 
Franz has, has been training on that and, and has, has extended that. Um, so he's our, he's our point of contact uh, for, for, that, for that connection. Um, Franz also is our point of contact for uh, Snowball. So how, we, how we're organized on the Android team is we essentially have a point of contact for every board that we support. And so that point of contact is someone you can go to to talk to uh, about that board, the current support of that board, the builds of that board, any, any, any problems you're having, support, so on and so forth. Um, that, that person has a counterpart in a landing team that is the point of contact on that landing team. So in this organization, we can actually um, have a continuity of, of uh, support for every baseline that we, that we have. And we're pushing that same, that same um, kind of structure out into our working groups as well. So we're, we're getting people aligned on particular platforms so that people can, be, can really dig in and, and be the expert on that platform. So Franz is, the, is, our, is our snowball expert. We have uh, uh, Bernhard uh, Rosenkresner, who is um, our IMX53 point of contact, and is also doing um, some work with multimedia and um, a bunch of stuff. <laughs> We've got Patrick. Uh, Patrick is, um, has been, uh, predates m myself on the Android team. Um, has has seen the Android team uh, uh, people come and go on the Android team, <laughs> um, and has has historically uh, 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 taken care of of builds and 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 is um, has worked on on Snowball and Panda and really bootstrapping the Android organization so that we are now in the situation that we're in to uh, to really execute on all all uh, five boards that we're supporting. We have Tony. Tony uh, comes to us from St. Erickson, um, as does as does Patrick. Um, Tony has two roles on the Android team. He is uh, our, our acting PM, and he also does um, some integration work and some and some development work. So, as you can tell, on the Android team, we all wear a lot of different hats. Um, so, uh, we're fairly fairly busy folks. Um, I believe. Let's see here. Uh, Scott, Scott in the back is our is our landing team lead. So he's responsible for all the landing teams, um, uh, setting setting direction, managing uh, the statement of works for landing teams. Um, we've got Fathi, who is our release manager and uh, PM for um, for Ubuntu, correct? For all platforms. For all platforms. Um, and so Fathi uh, takes care of our of our monthly release notes. Um, make sure that the releases are going out the door. We've got Munir, who is also a PM and also has done uh, release work. Uh, John Stoltz in the back. John Stoltz uh, ma maintains our uh, kernel, the Android kernel tree that we pull from ultimately. And it's in his tree that we will pull together the, um, the, various, the various builds into one, into one source. Uh, so, Fairly, fairly, fairly important, important role. Uh, we have Paul Sokolovsky, who is our infrastructure go-to guy. He has set up Garrett for us, Android Bill. He's he makes the Android team work really, really well. So we're we're very fortunate to have him, and, and he's um, his work on Garrett this last month has set us up to actually move to Garrett fairly effectively uh, for this cycle. So that's that's very useful. And oh, and we have Chow. In the back, Chow Yang um, is our. Um, let's see, same sort. Can't remember. SDI What's that? SDI Right. SDI right. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chow is working on uh, uh, also working on ST Ericsson and has been our toolchain. Um, has been working uh, with the toolchain group to uh, get their get their technology into our Android builds. And was instrumental actually in this last cycle in making sure that our 1107 uh, build included the 4.6 GCC toolchain. So, actually, 1107 was a fairly a fairly great month um, for really 
achieving the vision of what the LED is, which is a, the Lenaro kernel um, with the Android patch set on it, plus a TI uh, landing team patch set on top of that, with our TIP GCC and the TIP Android. And uh, to my mind, we're one of the or or pretty much the only organization that put out that bill um, across. Um, in this in this case, we put that bill out on Panda and and Beagle. Um, in 1108, we'll be putting that bill out on. Um, we'll be putting out a similar build um, on both Panda, Beagle, Beagle XM, and also IMX uh, 53 and Snowball, and, and possibly uh, the Origin board. So that's. Have I forgotten anybody? What's all we get? What time is he stepped out? So, um, actually, Chad, would you mind going back to see if Otao's in the room? Not in. Oh, okay, I'll check mine. Cool, thanks, man. So, Botao is actually our Samsung point of contact and um, has also been expanding the platform um, a little busy box in this last month. Um, but he's responsible for working with Angus on the landing team to get, to get Samsung out there. So, a fairly, for such a small team, we have a lot of, a lot of dependencies. We depend, of course, on everybody else. <laughs> and we, um, we effectively uh, hope to, uh, to bring, bring the Lenara organization into this, you know, fully uh, monthly release um, with complete uh, continuous integration. Um, um, so that we're we, we're able to affect we're able to uh, produce quality builds um, all the time. So that's the that's basically our Android. <laughs> Very Very to you. Yeah. All right. Do you use Android on your PC? Wow. No, I think it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a bunch of Lucid Links or whatever it is. Oh, I lost my. Does somebody else have the Etherpad up? Do you have the Etherpad up? Mine is broken or physically. Okay. So let me just. Um, I'm not actually sure what's going on. I love it going to sleep. But that's okay. Easy enough to sort out. Oh, I Okay, so while this is rebooting, Professor Zenda, I have an overview of the NARS Android approach <coughs> Android experiences, so you maybe you can go ahead and do it. Yeah. I will take them. Thank you. Okay, so our Android approach comes pretty much directly out of the standard Android approach that Google um, and Qualcomm, to my knowledge, um, have executed at, in their organizations. So early on in Android development, a few tools came online that have really kind of set the, set the tone of how Android actually gets done. Uh, those tools have been those tools are an integral part of a continuous integration loop that is always running and whose main job is to actually test each patch that is approved 
and uh, is approved for, for distribution. So the idea is that as each patch gets approved, that patch is actually applied to a test build. That test build is regressed against all known hardware. And on passing, that patch actually becomes live. The idea is that since I have a per patch fidelity in my testing, that it's easy to track down when a patch breaks the build. So what we're doing with the Android group here at Lenaro is we're moving to that, to that level of fidelity. Right now, <coughs> what we currently do is we have effectively about three weeks of development. And each week, we meet with each group that we're, that we're taking, um, taking code from. So we um, power management. Uh, graphics, the kernel working group, um, each landing team. Each week we, we meet with those with those teams and we see, you know, based off our blueprints and their blueprints, how we're doing on delivering for that month. Oh, here we go, Jeff. Yeah, hi. Hey. I'm just building on the Samsung uh, build. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to, um, do you want to keep going with them? or? Several minutes later, I will mean, I mean, go back. Okay, cool, cool. cool. So, so we meet, with, we meet with each group each week, and ideally, we actually take a mini drop each week. So we produce effectively 11, uh, the first 1107 build, the first 1108 build in that first week. And the idea is, is that as we produce those builds each week, we're, effect, we're kind of emulating that continuous integration cycle on a weekly, on a weekly basis. Um, once things become automated, we'll actually be able to increase that to daily. So um, you'll have a daily pre-integrated build that comes out the door um, that's been tested and, and, is, and is known to work. And so that, what that'll do is that'll effectively, instead of having this three-week cycle where people work for three weeks and then for that last week things kind of calm down a little bit and you, you're essentially in integration mo mode, you do away with that and you can develop for that full four weeks because what people have developed has already been has already been integrated and you already have a build sitting there waiting for you. Now the tools that we use to actually do this to do this CI loop currently, um, currently we have the Android Builder. So the Android Builder is a um, is a site, and I, I encourage everyone to come to actually the, the, the Android uh, session right after this, um, because I'll give examples and things uh, uh, in that session of this. But the Android Builder is effectively a, um, a network a web a web app that you can request a build uh, a build that uh, a build to be made, and that build will then will then happen on. Uh, on our server farm that we that we rent from um, from Amazon, correct? It's in the cloud. Yeah. In the cloud. So that cloud, those cloud builds are from scratch builds. So they get kicked off. They get they get built, and, and we can do a, an Android build in in a little over an hour, uh, dependent. So that's pretty fast, and that's full sync down, um, full sync the source, do the build. Um, and then um, out pops um, a build that uh, a set of a set of images that we then use Lenaro image tools to actually program <coughs> on a board. So this is our current process. We take those and we actually request that that they get tested by Lava, and then we also also test them by hand across across all boards. Now, going forward, um, and this is some of the work that Franz did that request for testing actually now is automated. And so now things, after they get built, the build gets built, it's actually picked up by the test framework and that test gets executed. The same test we kind of do by hand gets executed on that build. After that test gets run, there's further work to actually hook that into, um, into the Part of the CI, the CI loop that takes care of that testing whether a patch is, is good or not. And that system 
um, was developed at Google in the early in the early days of Android, and is still used quite extensively in Android development. It's called Garrett. And so Garrett is a web-based uh, patch management tool, and what it essentially does is it it's a tool that's specifically designed to ship a product. Um, to, to manage the, the commits that are going into a baseline. Um, you submit a patch, everyone can see that patch. So this is nice, you know, if you've, if you've done patch management on uh, kernel.org, um, and kernel.org isn't the greatest example, but, but the idea is still the same, that, you know, a lot of patch, a lot of patch management can get done in email, and, and if you're used to that mode of operation, then that then that works for you. But the majority of people that are coming into Android development aren't used to doing patch management over email, and, and having a tool like Garrett, where you can submit your patch set through the web interface, do the do the um, do the review, and then have Garrett actually manage <coughs> the how Garrett managed the, uh, the, the review um, and test cycle for you so that that change eventually uh, makes it into a build. Having this tool allows you to really scale your organization. So um, as a Qualcomm engineer, we actually supported over 24 different boards um, in a CI loop using, using Garrett. So it, and that was from people around the world. So we're talking about probably about a thousand commits a day coming into that system. And it's scaled pretty well. I mean, Google's, Google's the same. Um, they've got, if you look at, if you look at their, the reviews that are coming in at any one time, it's, it's just an amazing amount. So, and then, of course, what happens is those, those, those changes get reviewed. When they're approved, they, a, test, a test build gets spun up with those, those changes merged. And then those, that test build is actually regressed on a, on a unit. And if it passes, then that, that patch is accepted into, um, into that main line. Of course, that, that acceptance can actually be manual as well. You can, um, you can manually test and you know, hit the, the, the so-called verify bit in, in Garrett. And, and, um, and then you can even manually merge, merge patch. So Garrett's really just a tool uh, a means to an end to, to make that whole process um, more easily managed. So that's where we're moving to um, from where we are right now, which is, which is uh, fairly, fairly manual. So um, that's pretty much the mechanics of, of our day-to-day. -day. Um, from a board perspective to actually get to the place where we can talk about unification of the kernel. The tactic that we're taking is to get support across all the boards on any kernel version because a lot of these, um, a lot of our landing teams have done extensive work on older kernels and so since the kernel is, is one of many components in an Android build system, you can actually get quite far with an older kernel. And you can see how the, how the build performs and how the, how, the, how the board performs using older kernels and older, older tool chains. As we get boards into the build system, then we worry about upgrading the kernel or worry about upgrading the tool chain. And we kind of move naturally after that. What this allows is it allows people to, to work with the boards, and so they have a stable platform. My own, my own personal goal is that our platforms are, are stable, um, easy to use um, builds that people can, can do work off of. They can do upstreaming, they can, do, they can base products off of them, they can see what's going on in the next version of, of Android. Um, I mean, to give you an example, there's, there's a lot of excitement that Lenaro is actually shipping a 3.0 kernel with GCC 4.6 on the original Beagle board. I mean, nobody's doing that. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. And a lot of that is from a lot of the work that's already, that, that had been done, that Patrick and, and, and John Stoltz 
and uh, Andy Green, who, who's not here, uh, have really facilitated. So they're they're really the superstars there of, of making of making that happen. And, and Ken Werner from from the tool chain group. So once we have you know once we kind of get all of these boards supported, we can then talk about getting onto John Stoltz's common kernel. We'll have a common we'll have common. Um, We'll, we'll see what the differences between the configs, we'll see what the differences between all the drivers, and then we'll be able to really start doing that, um, uh, doing that refactoring where we can, we can then build, at least, you know, build out of the same tree. So that's the first step. And then we can move to actually running with the same binary, where the differences are maybe brought in as, as modules and, and are ins modded at the point of Way to run. So that would be that would be perfect. You know that would be, and I think that I think that 1108 is is a is a realistic goal for seeing some of that come to fruition. Um, so, uh, but of course, uh, of course, we'll have to we'll have to see how things. How things go. So that's kind of a, a sketch of of our Android process. It's very focused on getting builds out the door that are that work. Um, and that are easy to use. So that's, you know, it's very product focused, very, very delivery focused. So, are the, are the platforms are the Piper, Beamable, the uh, Eric's, 53, the Origin, 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 and B because it's always there and it's well supported mainline, so it's a good baseline to keep running. And we're ready to link this in with, we're ready to with Lenara, oh sorry, with Lava, so we've got the... Yes, that's what he was saying, I mean, this whole thing, thing. Right. so we have already, we have already um, daily booting um, Android images, we really stand the test suite there, but with this continuous integration that Zach was describing with Gary, it's even becoming better, so every time you push something to our Android project, it will first get validated in Lava, and then only if that succeeds and doesn't regress, it also gets merged into our tree. So, but that basically, you can already start adding tests into, into the Android uh, system in the back, but um, adding the test is not our focus. We actually rather try to, to ensure that the working groups and everyone can add their stuff on their own, try to educate them. So, <coughs> so is there any uh, are there any other questions about about what we're doing? So, what's your um, plan for, uh, in terms of adding things that aren't in the standard Android? I noticed you mentioned here and there things like yeah, uh, box added to absolutely. Things. So, the general mechanism that you need. So, so how is Android built? Android's built from a manifest, and the manifest lists a set of gets and a set of commits or heads or things like that. And, and it uses a tool called repo that effectively pulls those gits in. So what we do to host things that are extra to Android is we have our own git, um, we have our own, um, we have our own gits on our own servers. And we're able to host things before they go upstream. I mean, and Lenaro does that kind of universally across the board. <coughs> the GCC, um, the GCC work um, is is in Lenaro before it's before it, way before it's upstream, so you can get a preview. Effectively. What this also means is that is that those that patch set may change a little bit, but the so that's the first part. That's just the enablement part, and then you have the, actually the upstreaming part. And so, in of course, in the Android world. We consider AOSP to be the upstream for much more component, and that's through Android's open source project and managed through Garrett. And so, those changes that that should go up to Google uh, are get get submitted to Google, and and we've had actually some pretty good luck outside of the kernel getting things into the Android tree. Um, people. People underestimate the, the, the uh, um, well, it's just difficult to get things into the, into the, Google, to the Google tree. Um, in fact, the, the better way, the, 
the, the, the typical way it'll, it'll actually work is that, um, like, like John's doing, you'll, you'll actually have a relationship with, with some of the kernel guys. They will tend to take your code and just, and just rework it and, and submit it up as, as themselves. Um, but the functionality gets in. And, and in fact, we've actually had uh, some good conversations, um, not good conversations yet. We've had some, some um, interest from the Google kernel group on not only our CMA work that Jesse is working on, um, <laughs> but also our, our builds. And because it's really interesting to see Panda running, you know, the latest Android, the latest GCC. And that gives Google something to work off of, right? Um, they have something pre-integrated. They don't have to do a lot of work. And it's a really good example of, sorry, I'm going off topic. But I'll finish that with saying, our builds are a really good example of how an Android open source, how, how Android open source should work. When you go to AOSP, you should get a, an end-to-end -end build. Um, and I think they, they, they've started to see that a little bit. So we'll have more conversations. But was your, was your question more about policy, what we had, or was it just? Yeah, I was wondering what the uh, thoughts were, because I mean, you mentioned fairly busy boxes ago, and how the, the balance of moving too far away from the mainland by adding things that include features, or that are different. So, yeah, perfect. So BusyBox busy box doesn't go to Google, right? They don't, if they wanted it, they would take it. How about libjpeg turbo? That's a different thing, right? To convince Google to actually take on a different project takes a relationship that, that we're not there. I mean, if it was a simple answer, I think the rule is whatever the working groups are doing, and um, they should integrate against our, in our builds so we can prove it works well, it's well fleshed out, and then it can go to Google. And on top, we would only add stuff if, it, if it's really if you decide it's important for the development experience to make them more efficient. So BusyBot, for instance, is better for people that want to, want to, want to hack around. And we think <coughs> our build is not like an end-user focused build. So we, but we, we typically don't change it. Like, I mean, we, we don't invest much on tweaking the UI, make it funky here, and so on. So I mean, we just enable a better launcher than the default one. And uh, BusyBot, besides that, we only we try to identify topics and give people basically help within an hour or two. To identify the topics to integrate them, to validate them daily, and to prove um, that they are really good, and good stuff. And also allow people to easier start from something. Like for, for GCC, we can basically take our builds and use a GCC 4.6, we release uh, in binary form, and you can just go with that automatically. There was a question on IRC. Ken! This is Ken. Ken is our, uh, is our, uh, our fantastic. Uh, Android-focused uh, uh, toolchain engineer. So let's see what Ben Ken has to say. What about the NDK? Are you going to offer the developers an NDK that matches up with the GCC that we've used to compile the Android images? Plus one for including BusyBox. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> you can thank... Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's been the plan. Um, we're not doing an NDK yet because we need more help um, to put out an NDK. Um, you know, it's a, it's an entirely it's entirely new base, uh, entirely new distribution. Um, it's tricky, but it's it's extremely useful. So, Android. I'll give a quick sketch of this. Um, Android breaks development up, uh, gives certain developers different views into the system. So typically people use the SDK. The SDK is, um, works against an API number. And so each new rev of, of Android is given a number, and that is the API revision that that SDK is working for. And they, they do a great job integrating the SDK into Eclipse, and, and developers never even see the hardware. They, they work as if the hardware is just some mythical platform that, that exists. For people that want to do innate more, that work, want to work closer to native code, now we're still talking out of the current. Um, but for people that want to work on, um, for example, graphics, and want to write, you know, want to write code in, uh, in C, C, or in C++, Google provides a stable NDK. And they basically say, these are the sets of, this is the set of libraries that isn't going to change. 
And that's essentially that API level of the NDK. Um, and that NDK is actually a subset of the platform in many ways. And so a lot of, all, most of those libraries are actually in the platform build that we produce. And that platform build can be used in an, in an NDK manner. Um, there's a few other, there's a few other build niceties um, and integration niceties for doing just just an NDK without all the other platform stuff in it. Um, so the NDK is actually smaller than the, the full the full platform build. Um, but then and then of course you have the platform build, which pretty much. Uh, Lenaro or the SOC manufacturers, those are the people doing the ARM, <laughs> would, would work on the platform build and you know that's the kernel and um, the entire set of, of libs, the Android framework um, and everything. So and that's the thing that we don't have yet for, for 3.2 that's actually been released. Although, um, and uh, Google has released all the open source parts of that. So they've actually released 3.2, the open source parts of 3.2. Oh, GPL. Was. What's that? GPL. Yes, yes. <laughs> GPL. Thank you, thank you. GPL v2. <laughs> um, yeah, they haven't released uh, anything else. And, and you can do those builds today and they, and they build, they just don't do anything useful. <laughs> yes? So I, I've got a question. Sure. Um, you talked very eloquently by the way, about the oh. fact that you've got to continuous integrations with uh, the Lenora kernel and with the, the, the Linux org kernel. Now one of the problems we've had historically is that in R we've been having to wait a while to be able to, 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 to take a, a set of patches that we've staged through Catalyst Tree and to get those to actually be in the main line. Sometimes it can take many, many months for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And a classic example today that's a hot potato is the A15 about some of the A patches and specialization patches, which are in the public domain, they have been for many months now. Um, but they haven't quite made it into mainline yet. But they are available in Kathleen's staging trees. So they are in the public domain. So they are out there. So do you, do you understand how it is that you can grab hold of those? Um, will they be grabbed by the, the land working groups? Or will they push them into the uh, Lanaro um, tree and then you take them? Or? So I can speak to that a, a, a little bit, and, and perhaps John can also can also speak just remember to that. for the time. Dave still we can continue. Yeah, yeah. So let's say it's like <laughs> what time twenty-three is minutes left. Twenty-three minutes left. All right, so we okay. have to tell you a bit more what we're doing as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we get <laughs> some, or you can just say, "Oh, Lenaro sounds great. We'll just we'll just thread into your model. That's great." Um, so as you could, as I as I as I've as I've said. We have all of these staging trees. Mm -hmm. um, you know the Android, the Android work that we're doing. That's in John's tree. Um, the TI, the TI landing team, the landing team's trees are in the landing team. So that, that's where they're, that's mm -hmm. where they're kept. So it's completely possible to take a patch set and actually get it into our builds easily, mm -hmm. and to have a build based on that, and to know using patches.lenaro.org to track that, that, that patch set upstream um, progress. Because as you know, as you know, there, there are two time periods in the universe. There's community time, which is unbounded, and there's product time, mm -hmm. which is very bounded. And a lot of our a lot of the issues with the ARM ecosystem and the kernel are exacerbated <coughs> by the fact that we're on device time. We are on product time. And the kernel is on product, is on community, <coughs> and so the way to solve that is to essentially have these these caches of, of trees, and to manage the patches in those in those trees in such a way that they they do actually eventually <coughs> make it upstream. And I think actually having integrated builds with these patches helps them get upstream because you're able to give someone a platform. And you say, here, my patches are in this tree. You can run this today, and see what and see how it works. And so it, it makes that will you take my patches argument a little bit easier because <coughs> they actually work. The one interesting thing, which also probably answers your question, is what we've been doing because like all the members take some time to give us their Android kernel trees. Mm -hmm. So actually, let's look at the mainline kernel tree, staging trees that we have in the landing team or the Linux and our itself is. And let's see how can we make an Android tree out of it. 
and it seemed to be quite possible to do that rather quickly all the time. So if you maintain something heading for mainline and staging tree, make an endo tree out of it, seems to be doable quite well, at least from what we experience. And we are doing that currently for all our landing team kernels, basically, and for our mainline kernel. Yeah. So there's basically this segmentation between kind of an upstream focused tree and a more of a product focused tree that we have. And I think it's good to have both because we also have, um, in having that kind of a little more clean upstream, you know, just what the community has, it shows, it's able to contrast some time against what is enabled and what is uh, out there in the product trees. And that can help um, incentivize folks to kind of move stuff upstream as well so that we can balance that up. So. I had a quick one on the platform stuff. Um, so how do you pick the platforms that you choose to work on? Do the members come to you and say, can we have an Android that leave you for this platform? Or um, the definition of the LB is always on, on member SOCs, right? So and um, low cost, high uh, high volume boards, and and, and 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 modern. So I mean, if you take those three, that's typically one board for each member. So those are the ones we support. So I'll speak a little bit about us. So Go ahead. We haven't rehearsed any of this, so <laughs> I'm going to dump a bit on these guys. So they all have to pay attention to everything. Looks like yeah. So so basically, um, a lot of our work <coughs> is felt comes into two different parts. There's the bits that we can come out and tell everybody about, right? we, we really want to make sure everybody understands. And there's the bit where we're working with, with partners, and, and we're working with some of the partners that are, are in with our and we're working with other partners that aren't. So we, we get this, this uh, sort of covert world where we actually will get, get boards from very exciting people sitting on our desk. Um, and we can do a lot of work on it, and we can come up with something which we think is an, an abstract of that, and then we can make that public to people. So we can have Company A's boards out there, and it's a really exciting board. We can see it being very performant, and Company B's board over here, and it's not performed in a different way. But, and we see the differences between the two. And, and part of, part of uh, our, our task is to try and just produce the common enablement for everybody, just to help to try and get, get through, the, through the fragmentation that you end that you have out there on the outside world. So we do a, a lot of work like that. And, uh, and the, uh, the project that uh, Dave is tech lead for is the Android project. And, it's, and it really is all about how we can get people up speed, how they can take Android out of the box, and how they can get it up and running, um, what obvious performance blocks they may have, um, how they could turn and switch it for a different kernel in there if they wanted to. Just general household practical stuff, and I'm sure we can talk a little bit more about that. What is probably quite interesting is what uh, on Pickard's today. And Andy's working on, I'm going to call it the platform mm -hmm. for the sake of this discussion. And, uh, and the platform is going to be, be, be quite an interesting thing. It's going to be based <coughs> on some of our, our new IP, um, IP that, that you would not have. But again, he's going to have the same problem in the fact that he's going to have external builds come out. He wants to be able to take a narrow build. He wants to be able to ensure all bits of goodness that we produce in other parts of our into that, and he wants to have something which is which is nice and solid uh, that he can then start to do some some, some testing and evaluation. And with the benchmarking guys over here, that's exactly what they want. They're going to want to have a platform that can get to a, a CI mode that they can actually start to do lots of benchmarking tests. Um, and some of that stuff they can share with you because it'll be done on member sports, but other stuff they won't be able to share. With you. So there's, there's a degree of stuff we can do there. So the interest here, I guess, is the fact, certainly for, for Andy understanding more about um, what his challenges are, we can talk about the platform just a little bit, that would be great. Um, and, and what you would need to do in terms of producing your BSP for it. And then if, uh, if they could talk a little bit more about uh, what we're doing inside of our projects as well. The touch points I've seen immediately are that you're putting together some in infrastructure that might be really, really useful to us. And we might be able to then help to get some shoot water patches upstream so you can understand what they're coming. So maybe maybe ARM becomes a, 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 a sort of like a surrogate working group uh -huh. so that you can get stuff from us as well. So I actually have a, a comment on that, just if I can have just a minute or two. Um, so one of the most successful uh, developers in the Linux kernel is, is Intel. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe a lot of that is because 
when a new Intel chip comes out, that support is already in the kernel. Yeah. It's already been upstream. Mm -hmm. And I think that Intel always had the x86 common platform, so it was easy to do that sort of work. And I think that with Lenaro's common platforms, that, that ARM can do the exact same thing, so that when, when the, the latest and greatest ARM chips come out, that that, that that support is already in the kernel, and so we're no longer playing catch-up. And that's exactly what we would really want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So the A15, we could do that today. The dilemma you have is that, is that Intel probably got a nice little SOC that they developed, it nurtured it, it's just their nice little baby, and it does all these places that, that everybody's going to work to and they're all common. So they have that lovely, cozy world. With us, um, we call it diversity, or you know it's fragmentation. And, uh, and that means that we've got all these very wishy-washy edges to our, to, to our IP. And anybody can bolt anything on in terms of uh, IP to, that, to make their own dedicated SOC. Right. So we can come up with the core parts, absolutely. And that's one of the challenges that ARM's facing now. So that's the interesting thing that, that Andy here wants to understand more about. Um, and, and that, I think, is a, is, a, is a very strong touch point. We <coughs> want to get back into, into the narrow. What you'll find is that, is that we're so far back into, into the past <coughs> and future, how you look at this, that, uh, that we're dealing mostly with, with models. So mm -hmm. we have models that come out of, uh, out of our group, um, the that, models that are publicly available. So it's all done, if you like, it would all be done in the cloud if you can software. And a model's only as good as a well, model can be. And then eventually, FPGAs will come around. Right. And they'll be painful to bring up, they'll be painful to use, they'll be in short supply, <laughs> and everybody will just, just hate them. And then eventually the silicon will start to appear. So we, we're right back there. So, so we can start to, like the A15, uh, the patches are there, they're available. They're all out there in, uh, in model land, so you can run them on models. But to, to get it to run on real silicon, to run as if it would be in a large platform, you've got to go back inside the landing things to where some of your members now are, are working with those sort of targets. And then eventually they become more free and more available. And I'm sure their goal also is that they want to get it so that you have a, a, a version of Android out there that's really good to go out of the packet as soon as they deliver their very first boards to their OEMs and ODMs. And that's what we all want. Yeah. So, so we're keen to do this, but the caveat is it's, it's going to be painful because the hardware just won't be there to, to begin with. Well, I think one thing that can help that, and this is something that, that ARM could probably do, is, is actually encourage those people that are not members to actually consider membership. Or if not membership, at least consider... Um, because most of the big members have those FPGAs. They have the big, you know, um, they have the big simulation um, uh, pieces of hardware for these new chips that are coming out. And they're doing kernel development on, on that silicon that hasn't quite made it out the door. And I know a lot of, you know, some of them have actually pushed that, pushed those patches up before they, before they make it up. They just push it either just to kernel.org, mm -hmm. and then they hit that, 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 that wall of, whoa, there's too, much, too, much, too many patches. So I think that if we can kind of shepherd those, those people into Lenaro where we have this, this, more, this more kind of structured approach um, that we can actually prioritize a little bit better, um, that a lot of that support will actually hit the upstream faster and easier. So I can turn it offline so we can have a chat. Yeah. You can see that going off. If I, if I start to answer you too much here, I can see it's going way off. On a very interesting topic. <laughs> but Andrew, you, you, you have to have somebody. But it means I'm getting these guys a free ride. So. <laughs> and I know I'm never going to do that. <laughs> and of course, I mean, I, I'm, I'm at your guys' disposal. So this entire week, you know, I mean, Andrew and I have already had a, an hour chat. So. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm aroused, so no, no. This is a good good form, and of course we have our, our Android our Android thing, which I encourage people to stay for. Um, but um, so is, there, is there anything you can you can say a bit more about the platform? Um, Just to understand your issues and problems, really. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we um, we have a, a, a board uh, platform roadmap. Um, by the platform, I think we're just referring to the next one. 
Because yeah, um, uh, you already got the tossing ball there. Yeah. Um, so we we're, we're maintaining um, and well, developing and then maintaining a, a Linux um, BSP, um, but we we also need to think about <coughs> Android uh, on top of that. Um, so uh, I believe that uh, Dave has had an idea of trying to come up with a. Um, an integration merging the script um, where <coughs> the script can automatically um, apply Android patches onto the, on top of the Linux PSP. Um, <coughs> nearly. Um, but it's like, it's an idea in progress. Um, but um, we don't really have a, a, a rich history of developing Android at the moment. Um, what we've done is a few uh, merges onto uh, Versatile Express platform and the Tusker platform, um, really just as a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a big question mark over whether we would have the resource to actually maintain um, a high quality Android distribution. Um, so it might be that we'd be looking for help from you guys for that kind of thing. Sure, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so just one second, but those are secret next generation BSPs, or are you talking about the current public stuff? So it, it would be a next generation uh, platform, and, and the BSP would be relatively secret to start off with. So kernel as well, secret, because it is a kernel. Some of the kernel changes would be secret, the kernel mm -hmm. wouldn't, but some of the changes wouldn't until we wanted to put in the public domain. I mean, so, so then the main thing you can do is, I think, any know-how and infrastructure being easily replicatable and in a way that you can downstream from us. So, uh, I, so I, I could be on cloud cuckoo land here on planet Zombies, I sometimes call it. Um, but I, in, what I would hope is that we can replicate what you're doing, mm -hmm. take it in-house, pilot it out so we've got the first bits running, and then as we can become more public with it, we just push it across and it becomes a seamless thing. So right. you guys are picking it up in the shape and form that you know and love and enjoy. Um, and we're, we've got experience in that. We can help hand it over to you. And then you guys can just fly into that, that bit of IP. Sure. So, but you still need to maintain like, a more or less continuous downstream from us. So we just we, want to work into the year and then you come back. We, we yeah. need to do that. And then we need to get capital. Uh, I can help you do all that. So, so, sorry? I can help you do most of that. So we can do that. Like, okay, so we can do that then. Yeah, I Especially think the secret part. I mean, you can publish it as better than Zach's hand. And, uh -huh. you know, but if not, we can bring it across into your hand. Yeah. But one thing that would also be interesting for you, I think, is to still maybe basically to, to, get, to get to know all the system and exercise to maintain the current platform <coughs> in your open I'm not sure what it is. But what is the current most recent platform that you have? The, the most recent one we put would be the Tuscan one, that's as close as we've got. So it would be getting it up and running what you have today on, on a Tuscan board. Right, and that's that it could be maintained in the open. And that, that could be definitely maintained in the open. Right. That I would suggest start there, get that used. So you have to get, get used to it, you get to know knowledge transfer, and then work with Scott to ensure to set up that basically you can get the infrastructure replicated in house or in separate cloud somewhere. I think I think the most important thing, and this is based off of this is based off of you know some recent experience. Um, if we plan at the outset what is going to be the open bits and what is going to be the proprietary bits, and by plan I mean if we're able to take an open tree, if, if you, or let me put it this way, if you're able to take John Stoltz's tree, for example, and apply your, your open patches and, and, and work with John's, John's tree to get those open patches on there, and those open patches continue to work and boot and boot, and the proprietary patches that you're keeping in house are then put on top of that, and do not affect things like you know booting or you know they're they're really just adding value more than they are adding you know they're 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 like blocking a blocking a, a boot up for example kind of thing. Then that that makes it this that makes it the most easy to work with with um, with uh, each of each of the landing teams. It's it's when the it's when there's a, an intimate relationship between the proprietary extensions and the actual you know, booting or, or basic functionality of the board 
that really slows things down. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that to, to really move on this, it'd be to, you know, look at the proprietary things and say, you know, do the calculation that says, well, maybe this little bit is proprietary and we, we'd like to hold this back, but if we just put just this little bit in, that'll allow the build to come up, boot, and, you know, facilitate a better, a, a more stable platform. And then you're able to keep the rest of the proprietary stuff on, rebased off of John's tree, then then we can move very, very quickly. Okay. I so that just one, one comment. I think one of the things we were talking about here was um, not so much proprietary stuff. This is stuff that will become public eventually. Oh absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's, the, just, the, it's just patches that they're holding back for, you know, because it's still receiver on none of these products basically. Right. Um, right. So and I, I can appreciate that because you know we I've I've had that uh, worked in that same same environment, so um, I can certainly. What I would say, though, is even, let's take Qualcomm as a perfect example. They push out, they don't, they don't, they, they have stopped pull, holding those kind of patches back all altogether. They, they don't publicize a lot of it, you know, they don't come out and trumpet it, but they, but they do keep it, they do put it out in the open. Um, so their their 8960 <coughs> chips that came out, I mean those those patches are live on Code Aurora. Anybody can see them. So there is something to say for you know putting things out there and not necessarily making a big deal about it. Um, but I, I I can see I can see both things. Uh, Google is the same way. They all of their kernel work is done in the open, and their latest and greatest kernel is out there and is uh, is on kernel.org. A lot, of course, a lot of their special work is actually in, in the Android user space, and, and that, that's what they're holding back. But for the things that are open source, they do tend to keep that fairly, fairly current, um, which, if you know what to look for, it can, can give you a nice little peek into, oh, that's, that's a unique thing. <laughs> Good. No, um, I can figure that Yeah. So, I, by my watch, I've got a couple of minutes left. I just want to give Dave, is there anything you wanted to, to add at all about, or you can hold it for um, well, the main thing about um, our project, from my point of view, is that we've got essentially three strands. One of the core citizens and customers. Um, we push things internally to validation, obviously. We take, well, the ideal is to take the narrow, the narrow baseline kernel, add whatever specific to our particular that's new kernels mm -hmm. that com uh, confidential at that mm -hmm. state, and move them internally. Uh -huh. And we've got systems where we do more or less the same thing, but at the board level. Latest one we're talking about, yeah. And then there's custom stuff where we're trying to you know, get stuff out to end users, to the people who develop this platforms as much as anything else. Mm -hmm. And there, that's the point where we want to, we probably most want to use full the narrow stuff on the low cost boards. Sure. Know, the sure. That's really where, where I'm coming from. Is, 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 is this side of yeah, and I mean, a lot of this, a lot of this is going to, you know, Getting you getting arm going on, on Android, you know, I think what'll what'll be the most useful is to just take a look at your guys' process, maybe co-locate for a while and, and see how you guys are doing it, get you up to speed, get you on your systems, get everything, you know, moving, and then once you're kind of going, it'll be easy to to work within the Lenar organization to use to use builds, um, and we can just because most every all of our tools can be can be are portable. They can be pulled, pushed, and pulled wherever wherever they need to be. So you know, duplicating duplicating a setup at, at ARM shouldn't shouldn't be terribly difficult. Um, or as my my old my old tech lead used to say, there's no invention there. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think I think something like that would would, would work out pretty good. It's all right. I'm just. Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like an instructor, I can stand up there and just no, I'm putting something down for external training. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it's funny you try and do this make sure you wrong. But yeah, I mean, you know, um, I'm happy to I'm happy to, to meet and, and work work one on one and pull in who we need to do it. So I think Scott's got some good ideas on this. We can sit down with Scott Great. behind the firewall. Yep. We can share with him what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Then we need to put black in the patch of you guys. Okay. 
facts, and that's your call to, to show you're doing the right thing. <coughs> we're treating as a lot of work in the group, so you just, they just merge up bits in how you do. Right. Do your magic. Um, and this guy here has got his own internal working groups, as you like. And, uh, and then eventually what we'll do is we'll just merge the stuff through Scott, out through to you as the platform to come share it. Well, and I think with, with our Garrett setup, that'll be a perfect opportunity for you guys to push stuff up. Because you'll just submit it to Garrett, it'll go into our tree, we'll review it, and, and it'll work really, really well. Um, it'll be just like just like uh, any other organization that, that, that's working on that sort of thing. And um, and then it sounds like the only other thing we need to do is do patch tracking to um, make sure those things go up. And we have our patches.lenar.org that can track that. So. Um, I think it'll be all right. I think we can really, I think we can really move quick. Um, so, so um, yeah, <laughs> we'll get you going. And, and we have a hacking session. Um, I've scheduled a you know a hacking session with ARM. So if we can get some hardware, start taking a look at it. We all obviously have the, the board already. Um, but yeah, if we can get some whatever the publicly publicly uh, released stuff is, some some instructions, you know, on some build uh, build scripts and how to program things up, we can we can probably move and get John's kernel up up at least preliminary and get Android, the script tip for Android and work through a bunch of the kind of the little issues and and uh, get something out the door. Cool. That's exciting. Cool. Well thank you thank so much for taking time out to share that. Oh absolutely really my pleasure. Good. My pleasure. I I really I mean I I want ARM to succeed more than more than anybody. I think you know I've uh, Ever since I, I started working with ARM, I've thought it's a it's a really fantastic architecture, and you know, uses a tenth of the power. So you love. <laughs> Plus, it's fun, right? You know, you can, see the, the the best thing is is that ARM comes from a, a a low end embedded you know universe, right? And it's just coming up into the into the high end, and and those low end those low end those low end lessons are are so important, you know. And Intel was always top down. That's um, why they... I, I wish I could share with this audience some of the stuff we're doing. <laughs> Trust me, even when I look back, I think we really thought that out very well. So I can see a lot of things happening all over the place. I mean, one of the things I can tell you about is that uh, in Taiwan, one of the problems the ODNs and OEMs have is that everybody knows how to develop with Microsoft. So we've got different Microsoft certification for XYZ and ABC. So they can go and pick in a team and put it together for product very easily. Now they're moving into this whole new problem space of how do they pull together an arm? And and the first problem they got is how do they find someone who's good enough they can trust to pick the team and who know what the team's talking about. So so we're actually out there now we're putting a lot of investment in putting together our training courses for arm certified with Android or the OEMs on the end so they can learn how to build and pull this stuff together. Yeah. So, even activities like that, where we're trying to plug that into the OEM OEM market. So that soon, soon you'll be able to get these qualifications and uh, there'll be a measure so you can build, build the team really, really quickly, just as you could for a week or something. Yeah, yeah. It's all really exciting stuff. In the Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, time's out now. We, we have to move to the next topic. Sure. Yeah.